Hey there lovely people, this is Sean and I am at the lovely place. We are inside the pole barn and the soon to be tiny house section, uh, an area that we can come, we can stay warm, we can get cool in the summer. We will have solar power in here, we'll have water rain catch off of the roof into some huge containers out back pumping it in with the solar solar energy but what we're focusing on now is preparation for putting the uh, wood stove in and putting the through the wall pipe kit uh, the dura vent dura plus out the wall wood stove chimney kit it's the six inch uh, kit but this video is going to come to you in one video but for me it's going to be in section after section after section because i've got to order parts there's lots to do there's lots of planning and preparation to get it to the point where we can actually get it done so you're going to see bam 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 day after day different wardrobe changes and we're going to be uh, working the whole time getting this done all in one great video it's going to be a very hopefully a very thorough uh, explanation of uh, what we're doing it might not be the best thing to do but it's what we're figuring out and how we're going to do it here at the lovely place and hopefully it will help you i know that i would love to have had a video like hopefully that you're going to be seeing today before i started this process or as i was doing it so as you can see we have all of this laid out this is many of these items came right out of this through the wall kit I'll show a quick overview of when I first unboxed it. Since that time, I've also purchased another 36 inch pipe, which is this one from the ground up to here. This is the nine inch piece that came with the through the wall kit. This is an important thing for me to talk to you about. Since we have a two by six wall here on this pole barn, which is five and a half inches, and then you have another inch and a half on this two by six in the depth, so there's a total of seven inches, not counting the metal. Since we have that, this nine inch uh, through the wall pipe, let's pop it off of here. This guy is not going to be deep enough. We're going to need to order a 12 incher. And the reason I know that is because these awesome instructions tell me this. So when you get the, your through the wall kit, you will get a pamphlet with instructions. Now keep in mind, when you start flipping through these instructions, it's going to look like it's not a through the wall kit instruction, but if you go all the way toward the back, you will find place back here 
on page 16 and 17 of this instruction booklet where it actually talks about going through the wall. And in this area, it talks about how you're going to need a 12 inch chimney section if your uh, wall width is a thickness of between six and nine inches use a 12 inch chimney section which ours is of course it says attach the t to a nine inch or 12 inch chimney section by twisting until it's firmly locked if the wall is less than six inches thick you can use the nine inch which is the one that came with this kit you to my knowledge you cannot get this kit this through the wall kit with the 12 inch that I need for this pole barn. But it comes with the nine inch, but never fear. We can take this nine inch. We're going to need a lot more because we're going through the wall over here and we're gonna be going up the side of the wall on the outside. And so we can take this nine inch and extend the, 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 the pipe on up even higher. So it's not a waste, but it would have been nice had it came with a 12 inch. Now there's a previous video when I purchased this safe. This is a huge steel, very heavy duty safe. And I purchased it with the intention not to use it as a safe, but to use it as a box, like a, a storage box for, for firewood and to place our actual wood stove on top of it. And so that's the plan. I'm about to grab my Milwaukee grinder and get to grinding off some of this. I see that some of these edges, I think it might be this one over here, it may need another little bead, a weld bead right here. Uh, if it does, I brought my welder and we may weld that. Uh, but I've got to get it all sanded off and nice and polished. And then I purchased some uh, nice uh, heat, uh, high heat paint, uh, matte black paint that we're going to spray on this. And this little mark right here is where this is the width of the actual uh, wood stove itself. It's not the width of the, uh, the pedestal that we're going to be placing. We have two wood stoves uh, and we did a video when we originally got these other two wood, wood stoves on which stoves should we use here uh, at the lovely place and we have made a decision. So here's a little clip, just a tiny little clip real quick of that video where we were trying to pick which one to go with. Wood burning stove A with the pedestal into the little tiny house or should we install B? which has the four legs. So this is more of a traditional look. This is more of a, a modern look. I can tell you, and I'll tell you later, I wanna see the comments first, but I'll tell you later, or you'll see it later when we actually install one of these, which one my wife and I have chosen to, to go with. So, drum roll please, I already gave it away, but, and, and a lot of the uh, viewers actually came in and gave us a couple of comments and recommended that they would use the one with the pedestal, so we are using the pedestal wood stove. So that's what's going on right here. And this is the actual width of the upper part of the wood stove. The pedestal will be somewhere in that area. What I have to do is I've got to order this pipe to determine how high up it's going to go as I make this elbow and this turn into the wall. I believe it's going to fall somewhere right in here on this two by six, which I'll have to cut out. And I need to create a frame around this, which is thoroughly spelled out here in the instruction manual the Duravin instructions framing a 14 and a half inch square framing that I'm going to create right up here somewhere but before I cut that area before I determine exactly where that's going to be I'm going to get this wood stove on here I'm going to get that upper pipe in to make sure I know where it's going to be coming over at here now the stove that I have which here's the instruction manual for it right here. In this instruction manual, it points out that from floor to ceiling, you need a minimum of seven feet. Well, we are exactly seven feet. There's also, uh, and I've got to read into this a little bit more just to be sure that I'm finding the answer properly, but you need a minimum distance for that vertical, or I'm sorry, that horizontal pipe and the ceiling above it. All right, let's get the grinder out and let's get the grinding. see what we get out of this.
this is where we're coming out uh somewhere in this neighborhood right here and curving up and going straight up now up there where the eave comes out about i don't know a little over a foot uh, i actually bought something that will work to get the pipe to exit out over and around and up i don't want to cut a hole through that and uh go through that soffit and uh you know cause issues there so i'm going up and around it you'll see that too uh but if you've never been here before briefly before we continue on i just want to tell you this is called the lovely place this is a 60 acre future homestead mrs lovely is down there right now painting a swing that we brought from our home that we're going to have a nice spot to sit and just enjoy looking out at the field into the mountaintops out out that way uh but yeah our plan is to move out here permanently when we can as soon as we can but in the meantime we're just working diligently to make this a self-sufficient off-grid homestead if you would subscribe to the channel like this video you're going to learn a lot here and uh yeah i've got a little black on my thumb here where i was helping paint a second ago uh, but yeah, check this out because we've done a lot of things already to create some infrastructure and we're going to be doing a ton more things. We'll be fencing this area in many different uh, places for livestock. We'll be making gardens. Pr probably down toward the bottom of the hill, we'll do a lot of rain runoff catchment so that we can use it to water our garden. Uh, but a completely self-sufficient, no grid tied homestead is what we're aiming for. So let's continue the wood stove project. So this is the titanium mig 140 welder this however is a max 15 amp generator so it's not gonna do it it's not gonna do the trick but i was able to get a little bit of a weld on here and i polished it down a little bit uh, for some paint so that's my first time welding out here at the property on the generator uh and it's only my second time ever welding at all period i welded a uh a mower deck on my little Husqvarna riding mower with this thing uh, once already and it turned out really great but that was using the right electricity the proper electricity all right let's move forward we're gonna paint it next I wanted to show you some paint that I purchased that's high heat paint it's the rust-oleum high heat tough protective enamel it says renews grills wood stoves and more and it's got this color of cap on here that looks nice and flat black, but I'm not sure how well you can tell. I'll put the cap beside the painted surface. That This is the bottom of the steel box. By the way, like I said, this was a safe. I've already removed the door for it uh, and left that at home. But yeah, this color is just kind of like a gunmetal gray instead of what this looks like. So today I went and bought this high price stuff at least it was at tractor supply and at home depot they were out of it at home depot at tractor supply it was quite expensive i found it on amazon but i couldn't wait because i came down today just to paint this and uh, but this is a 2000 degree fahrenheit where this one is only a 1200 degree uh paint this one actually says flat black on it and the lid the cap looks very similar i'm hoping it's actually a black uh i could have used this but we want it to as close as possible match our wood stove so this is a ceramic coating let's see what it does in comparison to this all right so i'm going to put a little bit on here this is the bottom like i said so i'm just going to look and see if it looks different in color very windy out here today got a little close to it so don't want to get that close when I'm actually painting but yeah that's I think gonna be darker we'll see how it looks when it dries but I'm gonna use this 
less expensive product for the inside of this that heat 1200 degrees should be just fine uh, so I'll use it for the inside and the back since I've got a can and a half of it and this expensive stuff I will use for the top and the sides as this is drying there's a little bit still left that's not fully dry but it's blending in and it's looking just like the the previous color I just don't see a difference so over twice the price for this this paint versus this obviously it's a better heat tolerance but as far as color is concerned I'm afraid there's not much of a difference at all okay so we grabbed the uh, the rim the, the cap that goes into the wood stove that the pipe goes over um, and set it here so we can compare the colors and when you look at it out here in the daylight when it's not inside with a little shadow this actually is not far off at all from there so we're gonna go with it I have a feeling that if you use too dark of a black and it's just gonna be maybe darker than the stove and of course this does match the stove so uh, I believe we'll be good to go so I'm hoping I bought two cans of this stuff I'm hoping I can get away with just using the one can and the can and a half that I have left of the cheaper stuff and I'll I'll return that one can for for a refund I paid way too much for it at tractor supply compared to Amazon so yeah I'll return that <laughs> Okay, so I'm not watching paint dry. Instead, I'm in here uh, actually measuring and trying to figure out exactly where I'm going to land with my pipe and how much pipe I'm gonna need. I wanted to show you before I move further a little bit more about the Dura Plus pipes uh, and I wanted you to see how these connect together. Okay, here's a 36 inch uh, pipe that uh, we'll be using outside. And this is the male side up this way and you can see this groove right here uh, this little nine inch piece you can see the right here where it it comes out it protrudes right there the same amount uh, size as that groove so this is going to slide over that and then you can see this little protrusion right here where you twist it and it clicks on there so let me show you uh, how this goes together all right so right here is the inside of that that's the indention in that area. So let's go ahead and pop this down on here and let you see it. So there is the, there's where it goes. And then you kind of got to hug it and give it a turn. And it's together. This thing's locked permanently and good to go. So you can get these in different size sections, uh, whatever you need to get to the top of your roof. And that's what I'm figuring out right now. And I think I've got a little idea of what we're going to need. So as you guys know, the steel box is going to go here. The height uh, of the steel box is, let's see, where's my notes? 16 and 3 eighths to the top of the box. From the top of the box to the top of the stove is 29 inches. So that puts me uh, right here. This is the top of the stove. So it's going, the top of the stove is going to be right here in this corner. And then from the top of the stove to the center up here, I'm gonna actually be able to go up out right here because what I learned is the, the chimney pipe that's on the inside, it's called DVL. That's what matches up. It's Dura, DuraVent DVL. It's what matches up with the Dura Plus from inside to outside. So the DVL, it's a double wall pipe and it allows you to have uh, a close range of a minimum of eight inches uh, from the ceiling. And so what we're going to have, this is gonna be the center of the uh, the hole and from the top of the pipe it's a six inch pipe we're going to have about 13 inches to this two by four up here and then of course as you can see this is going to be open so we're not going to have any sheetrock or anything here and there's another three and a half inches so we've got plenty of space 
for that pipe to go through this wall way up here, which is going to be great. And it's so bottom line, it's going to come out this way and it's going to elbow down 90 degree down. So I need exactly 36 inches of pipe from the center of this to the top of the stove. So this piece is what connects into the top of the wood stove. This came with the wood stove. What's going to slide over this is a pipe and it's called a 6DVL-AD WD. And the WD, and you can get it either with or without the WD. The WD means with damper. And so uh, the AD is just the pipe that goes on top of this. I can't remember how tall it is. Of course, I'll have to look at that and make sure from it, I might have to go up a certain number of inches, you know, before I elbow over to here. And then once we set it in place, I'll figure out how many inches from the, the elbow to the wall I need to get out to my thimble. A lot of figuring for someone who's never done it before, it's just one step at a time and you almost have to order the pieces in, but you got to know what you need to order before you order it and uh, just make sure it's all going to fit and, and meet the uh, specifications that you figure out. All right, we've got it painted. Let's get it on the ground and then maybe we can get the uh, actual wood stove sitting on top of it, find the exact position so that we know our distance to the wall for the pipe. That's close. That's gonna look good. This is gonna be interesting. There she is. It is this high to me. This is pretty cool. Very unique. It's different. What do y'all think? Do you like it? Let me back up and let you see it. Imagine all the wood in the box down here. Yes, it is in the center of the window. It was not planned out very well, was it? I have uh, checked all of my distances between the edge and here which the clearance needs to be at least 14 it's just barely over it and on this side it's more like it's about 20 plus to the glass and it's about 15 to where the wall will be from the corner here so we're in good shape now i just need to figure out the length of pipe i need from here up to the elbow and from the elbow to the wall where the thimble is going to be okay it's another day lovely people and i have toys a lot of stuff has come in and it's time for me to get this black chimney pipe, the double wall, up and over so that we can find the exact spot where we're going to be cutting a hole in the side of the tiny house. Now, I want to explain this as I go and, and here's why I want to explain it to you. I want to give you the, the model numbers and what I'm using it for um, because it took me a lot of figuring out a lot of ciphering, as Jethro would say, to determine, you know, what parts I'm going to need to do this. And of course, there was a lot of measuring to do to find out the lengths of these pipes. But let me just start rolling with this. I think I've already shared with you, maybe, um, this DVL six inch. Um, it's a it's an adapter. It's called a it's a six DVL ADWD right down here. Now the ADWD, the WD part of that stands for with damper. So this is it. And this is designed to insert in most six inch wood stove uh, pipes, whatever that item is called right there. That, as you probably already know, this just pops on and off of here. 
And so you got your screw holes already built in to that. And notice how this will work. You just flip that up. That's going to close it off and open it. And there you go. All that smoke and air can go out. Now, I want to talk to you about this before we move any further. I did a lot of investigation on whether or not I should use a damper uh, up there on my flue, on the chimney pipe itself. And there are obviously mixed uh, opinions on this, but the opinion that I actually trusted the most was a gentleman who does this kind of work. He does repair work and replacement work and I think even cleaning work. And he took a pipe like this that had a damper in it and he had it apart. He had just taken it off of a job and he showed it to us. And the creosote that builds up, if you use this damper often or at all and you close it off like this, everything below this area there of course it can bleed through here it's going to come through some it can't completely choke it out but everything below that is going to have right down here and, and below which is nice having it so close in uh, it's going to build up a ton more creosote than it would if you did not have a damper at all it would be able to flow out but when you're restricting the flow you got more chances for a buildup and so if you do use this, it's vital to extremely be, be extremely careful to stay on top of the cleaning of your, your chimney and your flue. But I determined that because of this particular stove, only having this little guy right here, which seems not really, I don't know that it's gonna be doing that much. It looks like, it looks to me like that's actually not only the gives it the ability to be an intake for air but when you open it and close it up in there you can't see it but it's it looks like that's where it's going to dump ash into this tray so i'm not sure if it's designed more for that or if it's designed for intake i think it's actually designed for both i believe it fits both purposes so that's going to help bring air in and as you saw in the back i have an intake here and i probably will come out with some hose and go out right there some sort of real sturdy strong dryer vent hose to bring air from the outside so we're not sucking because this thing has to suck air in constantly to eat it up uh you know fire runs on oxygen and so it's going to be sucking oxygen from somewhere and if you don't have a intake coming from outside it's going to take all this oxygen that's in this house and it's going to be sucking air from the outside in so you're gonna be bringing in cool air in the winter time so that this thing can feed uh, into the actual building itself. And then it's gonna find its way to the wood fire or the wood stove. But if you've got it coming in through a vent, like we just talked about, it's gonna go straight from outside, straight into here. And I think it's gonna burn a lot cleaner and more efficient. So anyway, that is this part, okay? Next, we have what I ordered next anyway, was the DVL. E90 and that's the elbow that's the 90 degree elbow that's going to turn and take it out the wall but before we go there I determined how high I wanted to take this before it goes out the wall because with this double wall pipe you can get a six inch clearance if you are running vertical to a wall if you're running horizontal to a wall it's an eight inch clearance and so I was able to take, I'm planning on taking this up much higher than I thought I was going to be able to so that I can go out the wall higher. I don't want to go out down here. I didn't think I'd have enough room. But anyway, we're going to begin by using a combination of this 6DVL18. It's an 18 inch tall double wall DVL pipe. And we're going to add onto that the 6DVL6 or 06, which is six more inches that's going to go on top of the 18 giving us a cool 24 inches up and then this is going to go over it so once we do that we're then going to take it over to the wall and i measured this is going to be the challenging part um now these pipes these pipes right here they only come in certain lengths um and you can look them up and see all the different lengths they come in 
Now, there are a, an expandable one that comes down to, say, 29 inches and might go up to 40-some-odd inches, uh, and you can slide it within itself to either retract it or expand it. But I didn't have that that far of a run to even be able to use one of those expandable ones, so I had to do my best to just get a combination of a couple pipes here that's going to meet my needs. And it's going to be challenging. We will see how close I get. Uh, so I've got another 18-incher for that. And then I want to talk about this. And we may have to come back to this as we get further in this project on this video. It, it's all going to be right here. But this is what came with the through the wall kit. This is a Dura Black adapter. And this is designed to adapt from what's called Dura Black pipe. This is not Dura Black, this is DVL. DVL is double wall. Dura Black is just a single wall pipe. Kinda like what this looks like. This is just a piece of trim on here. Let's take, take that off. So all this is a little piece of stainless steel. And I have been attempting to get in touch with uh, Duravent to ask some questions because this comes with the through the wall kit. And on their website, it does say that this can be used in addition to converting from the Dura Black to the Dura, Dura Plus. It can also be used to go from DVL to Dura Plus, which, you know, you know what that is. And we'll, we'll be seeing that again here in a little bit. But it also, they have a video on YouTube. I don't know if you guys have ever watched YouTube, but you ought to check it out. It's pretty cool. Anyway, they've got a video on there on their channel where you can... Um, by a double wall adapter. It looks like it's a DVL adapter that looks similar to this, but it's double wall. Uh, and I wish I had just already bought it so that I could, you know, kind of determine which one to go with. I really think I would feel more comfortable to go with it because that's where it's actually entering into the thimble on the wall. That's where, in my opinion, it's going to need the most resistance against, uh, you know, being near combustibles. And so, we're going to look further into that. We're going to come back to this. But right now, what I want to do is fit this pipe up there and see where she lands. Let's do that. So we're going to start by grabbing, I think, would we want the joint to be down low or up high? I think we want the joint up high. And so that way they're out of the, the line of sight the most. I'm not actually going to be screwing this together right now. I'm just going to tap it down on here. And... Here's our six inch. Now, well, before I do it, I might as well at least put them in the position that they're gonna go in. Which means, and let me show you this, there's a seam on the back of all of these, and it is the back. So there's a seam on this damper that I showed you a moment ago, and there's a seam here. These don't, I don't believe, are meant to, you know, go directly on top of each other. I believe what we need to do is kind of offset them from one another. And there are holes. In fact, let's see this hole here, and then you have this hole here. Let's just, I'll turn it back in a moment, but yeah. See how this is offset right here from the other one? And how that lines up with the hole. And then of course we're gonna turn this back to the very back. But that's what you want. You wanna offset those just, I guess, side to side from one another. Okay, now we're gonna go up here with this six inch extension. And we're gonna take it, we're gonna take it and offset it the other way. And the reason I'm doing that is because I can see over here on my side of this that the hole would line up if I did it that way. I'm trying to get it to fit. It seems like it's a little bit off. And oh, by the way, if you watch a lot of videos about Duravent, you'll see a lot of people talk about how sometimes they'll receive these, you know, when they are shipped in and they're damaged. Well knock on wood and praise the Lord, mine have all been in really, really great shape. I've not had any damage. Okay, there it is. It's down and that hole's lining up. When we actually screw it in, we'll tap it down with some wood and check it out from there. Okay, back out in front of the wood stove. It's a little dark in here, so it's just, it's kind of cloudy. You, you might see that outside. But let's go across with our 90 and see where it lands see how we did so the seam on this interesting is actually 
lining up over here. I don't think it's going to be that far off, but we want to come straight to the wall. So wherever the seam is, we're going to try to make it work regardless of that seam. That seam is over here, and there's a one of the, the seam is in the back over here. It seems to be lining up pretty close, but I'm going to have a little bit of challenge getting this on. I don't want to hide from you how hard this is to get this in here and get it in there straight. So I took this off and I'm going around it. I think what I'll do, I'll get a little measuring tape and I'll see if I'm the same over here as I am here and try to get it in. Now, if you do this and you pull it back out, you're going to scratch the edges of this, but there's touch up paint that you can use to make it better. But I'm, I'm avoiding a lot of that, I think. So I'm about to measure this, but I wanted to point something out to you. When you're doing a 90, you've got to go a certain direction. So the seams are not going to uh, matter. And that's why this is probably harder to get on is because I'm not really lining these seams up in the place that they probably need to go. But uh, I've got to go one particular way. So we're at five and three quarters here. I'm sorry, four and three quarters right over here by this seam. On this side, we're at five. So I'm gonna see if I can I've got a piece of wood. Let's see if I can tap it. There we are. We're four three quarters there. We're still four three quarters here. Let's see what we got over here. Yeah, we're right in. I think that's probably the best way to figure it out. Now we can take this and we can pop it on top of this. This, these seams should line up like they were because I kept it in the right position, I think. Of course, I'm gonna keep this perfect. this a little bit here because I want it going that direction and it looks like we're good now again I'll probably screw these together all these holes are lining up here and of course there's no holes here I'll have to do some drilling and uh, put my screws in right there now we need to get over here to the wall and land where we can connect to the thimble with that adapter Okay, so here's the wall thimble that's going to be coming through the hole that we're gonna eventually put here. I went ahead and put a wall board up just so that we could represent the thickness and how far this wall is gonna come out. This is what we were talking about earlier. That's for the Dura Black and potentially the DVL to convert from DVL to Dura Plus. As you know, this is Dura Plus. So this, this one is designed to slide in that way because these are the same size. So that goes there. And if you look at it from the side, come over on this side, here we go. You see that it sticks out about an inch beyond this. So this is what's coming through the wall. This section should be about right to here is actually where this is gonna start coming out of the wall. It's gonna stick out of the wall about, let's see, I think I measured previously, two inches. It's gonna stick out of the wall about two inches. And uh, inside here, you don't have anything. It's just hollow. And all you have is the single wall. Well, this, I guess that would be considered a double wall, but they're right over one. They're actually touching one another. So you don't have a, another, this would be another, this would be your triple wall. But anyway, I'm just concerned in whether or not this is the right piece or if I need to go with the DVL adapter. So we're gonna try to get in touch with them and on this video again, you'll, you'll hear what I find out and we'll go with that. But in any case, I think it's gonna come out to the same position. And so knowing where that's going to be out two inches, I believe from the wall, I'll have to confirm this. Uh, we're gonna see if this 18 inch piece here is going to actually do the trick for us to get a perfect fit. So I went ahead and took the end of this adapter that goes into this DVL and I'm popping it in here. You can see how it fits perfectly. And down here, as you remember, it went over and around this. So that's what we're looking at. So this does go in a little bit, 
you've got about an inch of height there that's not double wall. And that's going to be just on the outside of where this meets the wall, actually. So now we're gonna take this, leaving this on, and we're gonna go up to the wall and see what we get. Okay, so something to remember is when you are taking a horizontal pipe to the wall, you need at least a one quarter inch um, rise per horizontal foot that you're going into the wall. So we're going in 18 inches, so we'll call it two feet. So we're gonna need a half an inch rise so that that smoke is going up and continues to go up. It doesn't like going uh, horizontal or it definitely does not wanna go down. So let's see about, oh, wrong way. Let's put this back the right way and let's see where this is going to land. I want to stand up on here. So I'm gonna put some cardboard on here since we just painted it. I don't wanna mess it up. Okay. So, the seam on this one, the seam is back here. So I'm gonna see if I can just make it fit so the seam's straight to the back instead of down. That way it's not gonna be visible to us. Seems to slide right on. I need a light to see if I, it's starting to get dark on us. You might notice I'm kind of rushing. I'm trying to get this set and get this spot before it gets too dark to see in here. We got a couple of lanterns. Check out the lantern up there. We purchased those and they can be recharged with like a, what a USB or C, USB-C cable. They're pretty good. Okay, so I'll have to grab a level and then of course, you can adjust these pipes and do some moving around. So now that I see this, we are currently, I know it's not in the right position. It's gonna to have to angle up or get level to the point where it's angling up, but we're just about an inch and five eighths away from the wall itself. I am gonna lean that here, but I have a feeling that that's, that's going to come together pretty nicely. We shall see. Let's check level on this. It took some doing, but we're nice and level this way. And we're nice and level this way. It's going straight to the wall. Not bad. We also have a rise here of about, let's see, let me get up here. To the wall, remember this is 18 inches. We've probably got a good half an inch to three quarter inch rise, which is gonna be sufficient. And we'll pop this back in here, see where we land, but bottom line, is we're gonna be able to go out somewhere in here. The question is, am I gonna have enough clearance or am I gonna have to cut out some of this? I believe I'm gonna do fine. By the time we get straight up here, we're gonna be close to center and I only have to come down, I think it's 14 and a half inches, so seven and a quarter from the center. I believe we're gonna be right above that. And then we're gonna to have to frame this, of course. Oh, don't mind the two liter, that's just a counterbalance so that we can hold that in place. All right, it's another day and I just pulled the pipe off of the wall and off the top of this because I've got to put this gasket on underneath this. And I also just noticed I had this little deflector, these little three screws here, puts this heat deflector on. So the heat's not all going out toward the back, I suppose. I just wanted to show this so no one thought that you didn't need a gasket there. So yeah, we're gonna put a gasket underneath this thing and then we're gonna put the screws through this, the bolts and bolt this down. And then we will get that pipe back on and get going. Got the felt on here. Gonna pop it down in there. And it's got these little little mounts, little things that will, you can put this bolt through here. There's little holes in here. 
and we'll just see if it it basically tightens it down onto the actual body of the stove. Get that thing started. All right. Okay. That's what she looks like inside. That piece is locking it on to the stove itself. Okay, I thought I would catch you up. So I've spent probably two hours <laughs> doing some figuring. And uh, yeah, so it takes some thinking and some measuring and stuff to, to figure it out. I'm going to go through that with you. If you don't want to see this part, just fast forward through. But it, if I would have seen this before doing it, it would have helped me think through my own project. Obviously, your measurements are going to be different. And I'm not going to go line by line on my measurements. I'm just going to kind of show you what I did. So uh, first of all, I put our DVL together with the screws and I ran it up here. I got it level from side to side. That's it's off now, of course. Uh, that's the black pipe. It's the DVL double wall. And I found my spot where it's going to go out the wall. Okay, so that's the dead center right there. So I'll be cutting a 14 and a quarter inch circle in diameter uh, around this center point here, which means I'm gonna have to come into this about an inch and a half or two, something like that, whatever. I'll be building a frame around it, but that's to come. You're gonna see that in a second. What I wanna talk to you about is all of the important things I had to determine. So this is the wall thimble. We've already talked about it briefly, and I, I told you that I went from this nine incher to this 12 incher Dura Plus piece because my wall itself as you can see, the wall thickness is eight inches. I'm gonna move that dirty rag out of your way. Okay, wall thickness is eight inches. Now I forgot the three quarters inch, so that left me two and three quarters. I had 10 and three quarter inches available after I came to this and I measured two inches away from this vertical pipe because you have to have two inches clearance outside on the outside of the wall. That mark right there is my two inches of clearance. From here to the end of this uh, 12 inch pipe, that was my 10 and three quarter inch uh, measurement. I took the eight inch wall off and left two and three quarters. Then I realized I'm gonna have at least a three quarter wall board. I've gotta figure out what I'm gonna be putting up here. That left me two inches. Then I put the pipe back up there and I realized that the, and I, I put a board up, a three quarter inch board up there and held it up as if it were the wall on the outside of my six by six posts. And uh, what I found was that I had one and 11 sixteenths. <laughs> yeah, I put one and three quarters minus a sixteenth. That's one and 11 sixteenths inches from the distance from the edge of the DVL to the wall. So, I realized that I had this two inches here, and then I determined that the DVL actually goes into the Dura Plus pipe all the way to this rib right here, which when you measure from this rib to the outer edge of this, that is a half an inch. So, all of that being said, I think this is gonna be very lovely, and we're gonna be within about one quarter of an inch. We shall see if that will work or not. But looks like the next thing I'm to do is to uh, draw a circle, the 14 and a quarter inch circle, build, uh, cut it out, then build a 14 and a half inch interdimensional uh, wooden two by six frame in there. So I'll have something to, to screw all of this to and then start running it through. As you can see, I've, I've been here a while today. It's already rained on us once. It might rain again. So we're gonna cut the hole when we get back, which will be about right now. We are out through the wall.
Zeit. What's with the smoke? I don't know. I don't know if it's smoke or dust. Smoke. I don't like this blade. We're gonna put a new blade on here. Let's see if this one does any better. That one was for nail embedded wood. This is just clean wood. We'll see what happens. Just using my screw, the pointed part of the screw here. Okay, it's the moment of truth. We're about to go through the wall. I'm gonna cut a big hole. There's no going back now. Let's keep going. All right. Might help if I drilled a pilot hole. Let's do that first. Looks like somebody had a little buckshot in the shotgun. Anybody home? What a gorgeous view we have. How about we just put a window there instead? What do you think, Mrs. Lovely? A porthole. A
Okay, Mrs. Lovely, if you don't mind, will you wiggle your toes for me? <laughs> let's see, let's line this up. Still good. Okay, 14 and a half by 14 and a half. Okay, I ran into a little obstacle. I had to go do a materials uh, purchase and check it out down here. We have some galvanized metal. It's a little thinner than what I needed. Uh, it's supposed to be 0 0.018 in thickness and uh, that's to max this. What the deal is and something that you need to look out for is this has to come through the wall uh, far enough so that when you put that black piece on it right here that there is enough of the black piece has to stick out two inches from the wall and uh, out past the wall that is and still connect to this well when I do that because of the thickness of my wall I am a couple of inches apart here for some measurement so I'm gonna cut a three and a half inch piece of that metal bend it around there rivet it to this and i'm gonna have to cut it in two sections because it's not long enough and uh make this work so it slowed us down i gotta get, get this whole field before we lose daylight i think i'll do it three and quarter, three and one quarter inches over that should give me enough let's get us a line here This is not long enough. This is only, I think, 36 inches. I need 46 or so. So I'm gonna have to do it again, rivet it to it, to make it, to make it fit. So I cut this at about three inches, which I should have cut it further because I didn't take into consideration the overlap where the rivets are going to have to go. Uh, but I've got it up two and a quarter inches extension from where it was. I put it up in the wall. It seems to be able to work fine. So I've thrown one rivet in. I measured all around, brought it all up two and a quarter pretty evenly. Now it's time to rivet all the way around this puppy. So let's find a spot where I can get I can get both of these at one time. So we're gonna drill us a pilot hole first. All right. Also, when you're, if you do this and you're extending yours with rivets, I would buy the steel rivets instead of the aluminum ones because as you know, aluminum has a uh, lower melting point. And I'm putting this on the inside of the thimble and that way it won't get in the way of the sliding over of the deal. So this is sticking out this way, but that's not gonna be in the way of anything. The uh, internal piece goes is no bigger than this diameter back here. So there's a lot of spare room in there. So yeah, now we've got that there. Let's do it all the way around. There we go. All right. Okay, you get the picture. We're gonna get this done. So there's a little bit of play all around this, so I'm going to try to find the center. 
of this and uh, get some tape on it. That seems to be about right. So let's get this on here for the moment. And then I'm gonna tell you what we're doing here. Since we have a metal building pole barn, I'm gonna put a J channel on this to hopefully prevent any moisture from getting in there. So I'm gonna take the Sharpie. It's got, it's a white paint basically. And I'm gonna draw a line across here because that's where I'm gonna want to cut this metal. Now, I'm gonna come out beyond this, I don't know, about an inch, maybe a little less. And uh, that way the J channel can come out past this and when the water runs out of it, it's running away from here. I hope I'm doing it right. I've never done this before. Never messed with metal J channel or anything like that. I hired somebody to put this building up for me. But I think that'll do it. Now I'm gonna check this level one more time. There's the bubble. So when I, I'll bring it up just a little bit like that. But we still got a good painted line up there. screws I put in too low so I gotta back them out okay it's sturdy now okay so I'm gonna try to make a spot where I can put some J channel and uh, this is gonna be interesting so let's see what, what we accomplish here I'm I'm not gonna cut all the way through this or I could have just cut a square I want to leave as much of that as I can. further I'm gonna put a piece of J channel in there and see what we've got see what she looks like 18 and a quarter inches Fifteen and uh, seven eighths, fifteen seven eighths.
All right. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but when I put some touch-up paint on here and some caulking, it's a whole lot better than not having any J channel at all. So we'll see if we can meet this up with caulk. And the good news is when the water runs out, it's gonna go down here and it's gonna go right to the ground. It's not gonna go inside. After I caulk it, it's gonna be perfectly sealed. So that's awesome. Okay, let me explain myself, come closer. So I'm, I'm doing things a little different. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this frame entirely. I left a little bit here. I was just wanting to keep this metal here. I don't know why, I was just wanting to. I'm gonna, of course, I took out the uh, J channel. So I'm gonna cut this out, this extra stuff here, get rid of it. That way I can get J channel around it properly and get the right sizing. But here's the problem. When I cut this, it pushes this in. I could build up behind it, but I uh, ruined this one down here. And instead of cutting a new piece and trying to fit it in here, uh, I'm going to build out with a piece of one by, um, I guess it's a, uh, I'll show you in a minute. I wanna build out with that right here. But um, problem is, let me show you this. This right here, this piece, wants to it has to mount against the wall because we're actually doing this the way it was designed we're doing it flush with the wall we're coming out the proper distance or we yeah we still are but if you notice this rib right here this support part of the bracket to have this centered actually lands on it where this one lands inside now i could build this one out but in order to build out i've got to come out from the wall more because again i don't have this rib up here to hold everything out. So I'm gonna put a nice solid flat piece of steel in all the way around here. And that way I will also build out here one inch on this side using this as the one inch on this side, maybe with a little bit more of a support. Obviously I got it upside down. So it's like this actually. So this is gonna be up above it, mounted into the bracket itself. Very confusing, I know. I'm not making any sense, but I'm pretty sure that what I'm planning to do is going to work. So we're going to do that really fast and get back to what you're probably interested in. That's easier than grinding. <laughs> Let's just clean this up, get rid of this, so we can see what we're attaching to. So again, had I known I was going to do this, I would have never had to take the time to draw that perfect 14 and a quarter inch circle and come through here. But uh, we're okay. We're in good shape. This may or may not be the smartest way to go with a pole barn. You obviously would, it, this is all going to be determined based on the surface that you're mounting it to. So here's one of my uh, two by sixes that goes across a strap or whatever. This is my inner 14 and a half by 14 and a half block. So this comes out one inch. Uh, this, if I put something like this out here, it's going to be just barely out past that. Uh, it's not gonna be exact, but it's close. But let's go ahead and grab the piece of the thimble that inserts in here. Pull these out for the time being. I just wanna show you how this fits in here. Now, of course, we have no wood support up here, so I'm gonna build the frame up underneath between this, uh, the frame I already built. I'm gonna bring it back another uh, one and a half inches. So I'll put some two by four around this whole perimeter here. That way I've got a, got a good boxed frame on the inside of this that I can screw this to. And when I screw it to it, it's going to, it's gonna come out where there's only about a quarter of an inch, I 
think of lip here. We're just going to have to see how this comes together one step at a time. Okay, we have once again got a J channel and uh, it's going to work right. It's going to drip down that way. Go out this and run down here. We've got one across the bottom that will put some nice caulking in. Somebody's doing some shooting at the neighbors. Sounds like a muzzle loader to me. And uh, yeah, now it's time to stick this in. Let's take a look and see what happens. It's a matter of getting this all pushed in and pulled down and what a perfect fit. Yeah, that J channel now is going to fit right here. It's going to run right down. I'll put a couple of washers down here to build that out just a little to get it level. But this is now pretty much flush with the J channel. We will get it screwed in and it will be good. I think. What do you think, Mrs. Levin? I think it'll work. I think it's gonna have to work. Okay, so I am going to uh, provide you with a correction to something I said earlier. So the way this fits into the wall and uh, all together is there is this lip right here on this triangular support piece that the T mounts onto, okay? And so this lip is actually supposed to go behind this through the wall thimble galvanized piece. This is a half an inch lip right here. Okay, and so it's coming in toward the barn, and this is like open space here. This support needs to go on the wall first, and this thimble needs to set down on it. After you put these bolts through, coming in toward the wall, you'll never have access or see those bolts again because from this side, this is going to lay down. I've got that tape there holding it up. Uh, this is going to lay down on the support and actually support this. And uh, previously I was thinking it went on the back side, but after a phone call to tech support over at Duravent, they straightened me out and now we've got a good game plan. And if you look at this, if you count that quarter or that half inch and you come back and pull it about uh, level here, that's your two inch distance from the actual combustible wall to the pipe that's going up vertically. So. In order to make this happen, we have to do a little bit of fabrication uh, outside to get all the distances uh, exact on the out exterior of the pole barn. Nothing's ever as simple as you would like it to be, but we got these fitting in here nicely now. This is just galvanized channel here. And notice, remember I had to cut that half little circle here, this portion, this curved area on the two by six. I'm gonna have to do the same thing all the way around this galvanized material. So we're gonna get that done. Then that thimble will fit right in there and everything's going to be flush out to here. So I can then mount my bracket all the way through and have a, a really good secure area 
to put that. I'm probably going to put a block of wood here and here, perhaps also just to continue my bolt, my long bolt on through there so that I'll have a lot of support there. Oh, wait a minute. Let's fix this something. There, that's better. lift this thing up Okay, we got all of those cut. Here's what it looks like. I've put them inside of this lip right here, all the way around. Obviously, we have a gap between this. It's, it wasn't important that I get right up against it. I'll be putting bolts through the sides on the bottom of it that will actually be in line with those two bolt holes right there. So, we're getting there. It's coming together. That's going to be some really good support. Okay, let's push this in there and see how it fits. We're just dry fitting it right now. All right, now look at this. This is perfectly flush with the J channel, which is what we needed for this to work. Okay, so this now, this piece right here, this lip, go where it's supposed to go so what I mean not where it's supposed to go where we're going to put it like I told you earlier this lip on this support bracket is actually supposed to go up and behind this galvanized square uh, that just provides support to this square I'm not really worried about support to this as much as I am worried about support to this because this is actually going to be holding the whole weight of the chimney structure so I'm not doing this exactly the, the, the correct way but I'm doing it the way that fits our pole barn here so this is flush we're going to end up mounting this right here on right over the top of this I'll put some huge nice lag bolts through there and grab hold so that this is going to be supported and down here I'll put a one inch bracket piece of metal probably from here to up here and get this nice and tight as well it'll support it from going leaning downward so I believe when it's all said and done this will be good I'm going to do a dry fit first uh, just screw this in put this in place and make sure that the pipes come through and they meet the uh, double wall DVL chimney pipes coming in before we put the uh, sealant in here and get everything nice and tight so you can see I have put some screws in all four corners of the thimble here and I have mounted this on for now and when we're left to right here we're let's see oh it's just this we're on it as soon as I put a support down here I've got my fingers here now but I've got to support that as far as this direction I've stuck a one inch piece of square steel tube here. I'm gonna cut probably a small section about that tall. I'm gonna place it down here, drill through it and put it in there. But when I pull down on this and I let it press against the wall, we are right on level here as well. So now I'm gonna stick my piping in, my T, and uh, see if we can get that through there. Uh, I may have to back these screws out in order to get that T through the hole. Okay, we have what I would call a dry fit. I pulled that one inch out of here because that was a little bit too much because this needed to remain level. And so popping a level on here, if I just kind of scoot this down just a little bit, 
were real good real good and you can see that we've got our two inch clearance right there and on the inside let me show you what it looks like we actually put the chimney pipe on the, the dvl and look at this looking nice we have three inches at the moment of clearance here so that will give us up to an inch of wall that we can put out in this area and we have the correct rise here and we are we're level there and on the opposite side and so now it's just a matter of me getting everything back apart and then uh putting all my sealant in there i also purchased some uh high temperature uh, sealant that's going to go around the actual pipe itself where it connects inside. I'll show you that soon as well. But uh, we're definitely well on our way. It's looking good. So right now, this wall has no studs in it uh, for any support for drywall or anything else and for ex interior walls. But I need to go ahead and frame this out so that I can screw in from that angle support on the outside into a stud on both sides. So I'm gonna to get to work on that and we'll come back as soon as that's accomplished. So uh, last night uh, I wrapped up this just to make sure that nothing got in there. Uh, we're gonna unwrap it, take it apart, and I'm gonna take you inside and show you the framing that I got done so that we could be sure and support this with a wall stud on the inside and uh so basically that's all going to come apart we're going to begin sealing everything putting it back and putting the permanent anchors in uh i just put some uh, deck screws in for the time being just to hold it in place and make sure everything fit and it does so check this out let's go look at this okay so got the mr heater propane heater fired up in here and it is doing the trick. It's keeping us warm while we're waiting to get this thing put in and all put together. But yeah, here's our framed wall. I've not mounted it down here on the concrete yet, but I've got the two studs going up and I put some studs in behind here so that it would be up against the metal so that we can drill in. It's gonna come down to about this area where those anchors are gonna come in. I'm gonna probably use four and a half inch lag bolts and uh, get those in there to support it really well. I'm hoping that everything else for those four corner bolts, I think it's already gonna go into studs. We'll definitely find that out when we start bringing it in with the longer drill bit. Here's a cool idea. If you do that, I had this extra large funnel and I stuck that right on top and put the bag over that. That helped it have a nice cone shape so nothing would get in there. So after removing this and looking up here, the four corners of the thimble, there's the holes for them. And they do go straight into this uh, framing that we originally created. So that's why they framed it at 14 and a half inches is because that hole for each corner is going to go straight into there, giving you a good support. Now, the two lower uh, bolts that hold the top of the support on, they're right here. And I'm gonna step up here and see where they land. Uh, but first I wanna show you the inside of the thimble. This is the lower section, that's where those holes are coming through. And then there's your four corners all the way around right here. So everything looks great in here. I'm gonna pull all of these off and I'm gonna give it some really thick, nice sealant on the inside of it. And then I'll be sealing the bead all the way around it as well. So let's take a look up here. Let me move this. See where this is coming in. So that's it there. And it looks like it's just above it. 
it's not in the best place because it's going to fall between this board and a board that I'm going to have to, a block that I'm going to have to put on top of here. I'll just have to uh, mount it really nice and tight on each side. Um, I can, in fact, I will attempt to angle it down. I think if I angle it down, I'll be able to get into this board and I probably won't have to block that. So, because it's so close to being right down there to it. I believe you can see it coming in here. So yeah, angling it down, that's gonna be my plan. So this is the type of sealer that we're gonna be using around the trim of everything. It's just a, called Dynaflex Ultra. I might've showed this to you already, but it's for siding and trim and it's black. Um, but for any heat sensitive area, we took the advice from the guys over at Duravent, their tech support, and uh, we're using what's called a 500 RTV. That's rated for 500 degrees for high heat uh, silicone sealant. And this one I just ordered off of Amazon. The brand is called Rutland. Um, I do want to point out something to you. The uh, stuff that you can buy at your typical box store that says fire blocker uh, or uh, something else, fire something. If it says fire in front of it, I was told that that's not what you need here. That's actually designed to, if it gets extremely hot, that's that's designed to expand to block fire from going through um, crevices or you know places in your wall or whatever. That's not what you're looking for here. You're looking for something that you can seal right up against the outside uh, Dura Plus triple wall pipe and uh, keep that seal between it and the uh, actual uh, surround part, this section right here, the thimble, right where it goes through here. That's where we're going to be using that on the outside. And to my knowledge, that's the only place we need to use this. But yeah, I couldn't find this in any box store. I thought this might help you knowing what to look for. should do it let's put these down in there and take a look at it I'm gonna start with this one because this is the one that has my support holes my holes for the support bracket and I want to make sure that I put that one on the right spot okay let's pop the other one in Looking great. Let's see. We had this one. I think this one's on this side. Not that those really matter much. But they've already been pre-fit, so might as well put them where, where they came off at. On the other side. Ooh, good it's getting it all over me yeah baby all right so i'm just gonna wipe down around this j channel and i'm gonna put sealant all around this area here and uh i believe we're gonna be in great shape and i'm gonna press that thimble up against there and we'll see what we get
trying to get this corner here as well where those two J's meet up. Do the same thing over here. Okay. bringing it up, making sure to put the bottom piece that I've already drilled on the bottom. Get this all lined up and get to pushing it in. Gotta get a little dirty here, but that's okay. off all right it's pretty nice and flush I think that actually made it come out just slightly putting that sealant in there but nothing bad you can see it poking through these holes as I do that, I think we're in great shape. Later, I will come and put some of that sealant around the edge of this as well on both sides. But let's get this screwed in. I'm repurposing some old, older lag bolts here. Let's find our holes. I'm gonna have to drill these out just a little bit i did pre-drill the wood a little bit make myself a nice pilot hole especially on these two supports here angling down like i talked about i didn't go in too far my drill bit wasn't too long but we're going to make these holes in the metal a little bit larger i'll have to go through all the metal with this Let's get the shallow socket, see if we can go in a little bit better. There it is. All right. Let's go up this way. Let's go in before we take that all the way in with this one since it's wanting to come out so bad. I'm looking forward to going inside and seeing if this is coming out or if it's getting in the stud. All right, now that flushed it up pretty good. That's solid. We're in, we're in wood. There's nothing coming out anywhere. This popped out just a little bit, so it might be kind of close over this way. But we're good to go. Nice. I sealed back in here already. That one was almost empty, so I got a brand new one. I cut me a tiny little hole because I want to go around here and try to seal this area here.
I'm gonna go ahead and increase the size of these holes here a little bit. All right, okay, push in the T onto the support and it's on. Now let's get it in there. <laughs> All right, let's just start. Let's just start this bolt here. Kind of difficult to do with one hand because my other one's on the other side of this thing. Let's see if we can get this going. Okay, let's not go all the way until we get the other side in. I'm gonna grab the uh, other bolt. See if we can line it up. Yeah, it's lining up good. It's starting. That one's on. That one's on. This thing is right where it needs to be. We've got to put some support under the bottom of this bracket down here to hold it in the level position. This is where I'm going to be putting the sealant, that high heat temperature sealant all around this. But uh, we're on and I'm, I'm thrilled. This is awesome. You know what's funny is every time I uh, press uh, stop on my camera, uh, I look back and say, okay, did I do it right? <laughs> and so I'm looking at it right now to see if it was done right. And uh, I think it's right. I think it's right. Let's go inside and see where these bolts came through and let's see if they, they went into wood or not. Okay, you're walking up here with me together and we're, uh, okay. So this one, this one's not in wood good. That kind of stinks. Ah, oh, same here. I thought it went in awful easy. So I did not angle down good enough. Now I did drill in a, a at an angle better. So I'm gonna back these out one at a time, angle them better, and we're gonna see if we can get them down in this wood. That's gonna be difficult since we're coming in straight here, but we'll make it work. I have uh, drilled in at an angle. I've went through that piece of metal on the inside. Let's see if we can get this in there. not finding that second hole. All right, it's definitely at an angle. Let's see where she's coming out before I tighten it all the way up. Okay, awesome. This one's gone and it's not it's not out anywhere, and this was already popped out some, so I'm expecting it's going all the way down into this piece of wood, possibly even into this one, but it's secure. It's definitely good. We got three nice deep nails here. Now we get to do that one. And you thought this was gonna be easy? No. Hey, we got a little wasper friend up here. All right, let's do it. Socket. It's angled down good, so let's just tighten it on in. Oh, she's tight. So now let's check for level. 
and it needs to the top needs to come this way so we can kind of pull this down a little bit and the weight of the pipe is probably going to take it down now in there that means the thimble or the t is actually kind of going to come up that's not necessarily a good thing because my pipe on the inside is angled up because it needs that rise of a quarter of an inch per horizontal foot and so they can't both be coming up and meeting and so we've got to find that happy uh, medium there uh, but what I'm noticing is when I do pull this down I really don't need any hardly any maybe a couple of washers in support behind this bracket it's just going to depend I think I'm going to get some high heavy pipe on first and see what gravity does to this I'm not going to be going all the way up but I will get above the eave today so I think we're going to start with this 36 inch long Dura Plus pipe and I want to always remember I've got seams on this on one side so I want the seam to be as close towards the back as possible that did not work for this guy but you don't have a choice with this one so let's see if we can put this one up on here and the seams right here so if I bring it this way now before I lock this I'm going to look into the, uh, uh, the the support brackets to determine if I need to put one on this low or and if I can put it over it or if I need to wait and put it up top there. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to take this one off. There's a couple of tiny dings in this one and since this one is down here at our eye level, I'd rather this one to be way up there above the roof line. So I'm going to open some of the other ones. I've got three of these. And uh, I was hoping I didn't put another ding in it. And so let's see if we can find a clean one real quick. Here's a brand new, fresh, out of the box, 36 inch Dura Plus pipe. And I confirmed that we can put those wall straps that we secure these to the wall, uh, those supports, um, every four feet. So we're not going to need one until we get above this section here, which is great. That way it won't be an eyesore. And uh, one of the big purposes besides support for that is to keep it two inches away from the wall. That's the benefit of this uh, triple wall class A chimney pipe or pipe that goes out on the outside is that you can have it up, to, up to, or as close as two inches to the wall. So that's very nice. And that's why we can't use the DuraVent, I'm sorry, the DVL uh, pipe out here or any kind of single wall. You've got to have something that's designed for this particular this particular placement. All right, let's pop this down here. Nice. Now let's twist it. It seems to be on and locked. Heck yeah. That's cool. Let's see what it looks like down there. Let's check level on this one. Just, just curiosity. Just out of curiosity. Let's see where we stand. Oh, that's almost level if you can see that. Bubbles right there. So the weight of this, yeah, as it gets higher, uh, we're going to be able to put that strap on there and that'll keep it level. So we're looking great, guys. Looking great. Check this side. This side's slightly off. Kind of leaning in that way slightly. So here's why it's happening. You may remember this support piece here is setting up on this rib. Now, if I pull this off of this rib, that probably just dropped it over this way that one's on a flat section of the pole barn siding and so i'm gonna have to deal with that i'll have to figure out what to do there so i had previously cut a little three quarter inch piece of wood i'm not going to be using this wood i just wanted to put this under this to see where it took the pipe regarding the level so we've got this side on this rib and this side on this wood and when you put this up here, it's looking great, looking really good. We can adjust it with the wall straps, but yeah, it's in 
pretty great shape. And of course, when we get more weight on it, this has a little gap right here. It'll be able to be coming out this way, which will make this more level as well. So we're really, really, really looking good. I've just got to get a piece of steel or some washers or something that will equal three quarters of an inch. Put them right here. I wanted to let you know that I did not forget about putting this sealant up in here. That's a pretty important spot, if you ask me. That's where water is going to accumulate and run off. And if I don't seal that up good before it runs off, it could go inside the building. So we're going to do that right now. All right. Before I can mount my uh, support straps on the outside pipe, I've got to frame all the way up to the rooftop, the ceiling up there, or where there is no ceiling. So I'm gonna continue these two by sixes all the way up. That Mr. Heater in there cooking up there in the loft, it gets hot. So this wood stone is going to bake us out of that loft. There's no question about it. Anyway, I had to get rid of that jacket again. I've, I've had it on and off two or three times today. I'm about to climb up there. I want to pop that nine inch uh, Dura Plus up on top of that 36 inch. And I did do some framing on the inside, but I've not put my two by four behind the two by six yet to get it up against the metal. I'm going to find out exactly where I'm going to be going in before I do that. That way I hit the exact right spots. So what I have right now is the 9 inch and the support bracket and a 30 degree uh, angle so that we can get out and uh, on the uh, outside of this soffit right up here. So first things first, let's store this puppy right here let's set this here for the moment lean this over here and let's flip this over minding my seam yeah there it is and it's on turn we're going to put this bracket in place We'll come back and we'll tidy that up here in a moment. I want to get it just right here for now. Shouldn't go any further than there. Now, we need this angling out this way. I'm going to be putting a three foot extension on this. So, curious how far that's going to go out. Let's see. Let's pop this on the correct way. Where's my seam? It's way over there. I'm not going to have a good choice on my seam. Let's see here. Now, it's also limited on the twist due to the fact of the way these twist on. So, uh, we got a little bit of a bend here. It's not wanting to go. So, I got to bend some of these lips out just slightly. This is no place to be doing that. I should have tested that on the ground. Let's see if this will work. If not, I'll have to go down and do some work. So, I kind of, I think I would rather it angled that way. So it's gonna come over and up. It's not gonna be able to be straight. Sadly, it's not going to be able to be straight just due to, to the fact that these lock on in a certain way and it, It's going to be in one of you know about six or eight positions here and nothing in between so let's uh I don't want it coming over this way. I'd prefer it going that direction I, I don't think that's gonna look great, but let's see if we can get it down on here there we go. There we go. Yeah, it's going to lock way over here. And when it locks over there, this is going to be shooting up that way. I don't know if you can tell from the angle that we're at. But, okay, so that's 36 inches. Right there. And that's 
gonna be good as far as the clearance away from this eave up here I'm not sure if you can see that and then we're gonna angle another 30 degrees back straight up um, it's this it's this twist that's got me concerned so I'm gonna go get what I need to mount this or at least to get holes in the wall so I can find where that's landing on the inside and come back up I'm gonna look at this from down there and see what we see let's just step back and think about this for a moment how's that going to look honestly I don't think it's gonna look bad to get out of these leaves you know if I'm straight out in front of the building it's going to angle up that way and back up straight yeah that kind of stinks I'm wondering if I were to adjust say the the one below it potentially now nah, that's I don't know you've got all these different connections and if you connect them just right maybe maybe you'll find the spot you want to find so let me play with this and I'll let you know in just a second so I'm just looking at it from down here I'm going to try to take the nine inch one off adjust it the other direction and see if that will line this up better so if we go back the way we were we're, we're where we were if I bring it all the way whoa, all the way we'll end up there so no it's the same deal you're just uh, you're just stuck hmm one thing I could do potentially is not twist lock this if I don't twist lock it then I'm going to be fine as far as my position out so instead of doing that just get it down here on here tight bring this down a little further around the connection and tighten it up on this connection not allowing that to have any capability of moving I think I think I'm gonna do that now that's not Duravent approved so I'm not recommending you do it but in my situation I think it's going to look a lot better and I think it's gonna work just fine I could be wrong but we can always fix it hmm the great the thing about this idea is that this screw that came with this is now not long enough it may not have been long enough had it went around there because <clears throat> it's very short so let me see what I've got on me I hope I've got something that will work what I'm liking though you see these uh, bolts right here that's got the siding that means there's a two by six back here which means I'm actually going to probably be able to get right into that 2x6 with this, this bracket and mount it right in there. So that will be phenomenal. I will get it going. I'll see where it comes out. Then I'll put a, an additional piece of support back there to hold it so I can put a good 3-inch lag bolt in there. Possibly. I may just drive it through the 2x6 and be done with it. But... Uh, I think uh, I need to find a longer one at least another inch all right wish me luck with this so I found one bolt and one nut in the back of my truck and if they, they, they actually fit each other it may not be long enough but it's gonna be darn close so I'm gonna have to drill that hole out a little bit larger because it's not made for a bolt that big let's get it going I'm gonna turn that 30 degree about another half an inch this way towards you okay what comes first I only have two hands guys I've got to change this socket out because now we have a larger nut uh, let's try this let's try this let's see if this will fit in here and if so I can finger tighten it yeah it's going to hallelujah but I'll have to take it back apart 
to well I'm, <laughs> no it's not gonna fit through is it oh it's close it's close no I'm gonna have to drill it first so all kinds of cool stuff going on here come on why don't you stay there stay stay okay if it'll stay there I will be good okay here's my drill bit Uh, oh, here they are. Great. I brought my my safety glasses. Okay. So, let's just take it and go through there. Okay. I think that will now go through let's get it back where it goes come on back up here back up here okay stay nice let's start this nut Now, let's get it in the position better all the way around. I think it's there all the way. And the good thing is it's actually landing on there. Now, however, oh, where's my level? I've got to check level to see if I need to put any washers behind this to bring it out. Also, side to side. Okay, coming right back. I got a little smarter and I grabbed myself my tool belt that's been hanging in there. And uh, so now I'm a little more prepared. So let's see where the level is on this way. Wow. It's like really good. Now let's check out on the side. Pretty perfect. So turn that over so it's not magnetized so if at all possibly just that way a little but barely yeah that's great okay so this side We'll put a couple of washers and we'll do the same on this side first things first i'm going to drill a hole the size that my bolt because i'm putting a pretty large hefty bolt right here so that it'll go through there so i'm going to put that in my drill and get it through this side over here let's see see if this bolt will fit in the hole I just drilled not a bolt it's a lag lag bolt and it won't need to make it a little bigger no worries I notice this is falling here too let's get it where it goes I'm definitely landing on the 2x6. Before we continue, I need to tighten this down. I need to make sure. Oh, there's that. I need to make sure that it's level. And 
it's not. So I'm going to tighten her down here. And that way it'll quit moving on me. That'll definitely hold it for now. We'll see if we will we'll, we'll want to adjust it at all later. But I think I want to get a bigger drill bit. Wait, there's my bigger drill bit right there. No wonder. Okay. All right. Now, I bought several galvanized washers and nuts. The reason I bought the nuts so it was so that I could use one instead of using 15 of them. And it looks like that's probably going to be just fine. Yeah, yeah, that one nut should do it. All right, so I've got the nut behind there. It's a galvanized nut. That's holding it out from the wall the right amount. And let's see if we can drive this on in. Well, I went down and picked that up and uh, I literally broke this Milwaukee uh, high torque adapter here. That's pretty wild. So uh, that part's inside there and that's, that's missing. So we're gonna go a different route here. That's pretty darn tight. But, uh, yeah, there's about an eighth of an inch that this could go further. I'll go inside and look and see what it looks like in there, but I definitely want to get that tighter. I don't have an adapter now, unless I can go find another one. But this, it's pretty nice. You see where it's at. Let's look at the level here. stuff stuck to my magnet that's great and that's great so we'll get on the other side with the ladder and do that one I'm curious what you guys think yeah that's not holding that very well hmm not sure what to do I could drive, drill a couple little holes and drive it through this lip here to hold it down on this. But I'm gonna have to do something to make that stronger. Well, the good news is I found another adapter. The bad news is I left my ladder outside to get in the loft. So let's get the ladder and we'll get up there. I wanna see where that, uh, that lag bolt came out. Okay, we're going over here right now. See where this thing came through. Where is it? It must have come, it's on that bottom two by six, right there. It must have come in literally into this two by six that I added because I don't feel it there. It's not up here, thank goodness it's not up here where these wires are. And I'm down at the bottom of that window where all the flies are at. I gotta get my wet dry vac and clean that up. But, wow, 
that was a good hit. I measured it and it does show that it is 16 inches on center, that bracket, that's where it's at. So it should have landed there. Uh, so that's phenomenal. That's got a good hold, no doubt about it. Nice, so maybe we'll land, we should land here on the other one as well. I'm a lefty and I've gotta be working on my right side here. So this will be fun. Now. I may have to adjust this slightly, but this one seems to be in a good spot. I'm gonna drill this out. So, let's go through a little deeper, just to spread that hole out a bit more. Okay, I think I wanna to try to put one washer behind that. I got a whole bolt full of them. One, all to do it. So, like I said, I found a, a new adapter here. Let's hopefully, I hope I won't bust this one up. I'm about where I am on the other side, about a quarter of an inch away. So I'm gonna take a step up, see if I can get a little bit more elbow behind it. It's tight. That will no go nowhere. So let's check level again. It's perfect, perfect, perfect. Try this side. little bit it's darn close I mean from over here it looks perfect I can't tell about from there yeah it's good how come this side don't look the same oh that's <laughs> that's because I have a washer bag that's a magnet it, it was magnetized to the bottom of this now it's perfect nice See, I'm shooting you guys straight. We just want to get this straight. Now, I have to get this on better. No doubt about it, because that's not good. Uh, if I had it to do over, this would have raised up a little bit, and I'd have put it over that lip. I don't know that it would have made a big difference. But I could always twist it and put it back at the angle I had it. But I really like this. And so I'm going to look into just some real short screws that will only go through this outer portion into this one and it will not penetrate the inner six inch diameter double wall that's in there so all together this is a triple the doubles in there and i've got a little bit of room so that's what i'm going to do and uh then it'll be good but i can also tighten this down a little bit more and see if that helps do that at a different time so far, so good. Now, as you both, as, as you guys know, I have not done anything yet down here. I've got 
the hardware to put behind this now between the nuts and the washers to build this out but that's going to be one of the last things i do because after i get all this weight and the brackets on there that will let me know how far in and out i need to do it also i'll probably think about attaching the inner chimney pipe the dvl double wall just to make sure it's again still lining up before i do that uh, as long as i got this here it's not going anywhere so it's secure the sun's getting low and it won't be long before it sets and i'll be in the dark so i think what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to cover the top of it and in a moment it'll be another day for you so we will be right back at it this is where the fun part's coming we're going to get this thing over here on the outside completely wrapped up it's going to be nice If somebody doesn't comment that's using your noggin, I'll be very upset. All right. All right, as we're starting up again, I wanted to show you very briefly what we are using, and I, I already showed you the first one, but this is the 30 degree elbow kit. So it comes with the two 30 degree elbows and the support bracket. This stock number or item number is 6DPE3OK. And this is, uh, this is what it looks like. You have the male and female ends. And uh, you see how this box is all beat up? I actually found this from a fella on Marketplace. And I got it at a really great deal. Because these are really very expensive for just those pieces. And so I got very blessed. And I found that right when I needed it. So we're ready to continue on up the wall. Let's do it. So here it is on page 13 of the uh, manual, but I was right on target with my idea. It says that if uh, the needed direction of the elbow is different than the fully locked position, the elbow can be rotated to the desired direction and can be secured to the pipe section with a minimum of four sheet metal screws. So yeah, do not penetrate the inner wall. So I've got the sheet metal screws right here. These are some three quarter inches and I will be able to go in and it won't penetrate the inner wall. We'll be good to go. All right, I'm up here on the scaffolding. I've got my outriggers on this time, so we're a little bit more secure than I was on my previous video when I was doing the vents down the soffit. Uh, yeah, it occurred to me, I never put those on, so we're all, we're all secure today. But down here, let me show you what we're doing, okay? So you may remember that um, I actually, instead of not securing this one in its locking position i'm not securing the nine inch so if you can drill through this one you can certainly drill through this one so i'm not only doing the band here but i'm going to drill through the band and the pipe bring it all together and i'm going to put at least four here now to get this straight uh, with uh, the building i also had to loosen this one just a little bit so i will be drilling through this one as well and so uh yeah we're gonna get on this and make some uh, make some holes and secure this thing up so i'm just gonna confirm this one i'm just gonna eyeball it to see if i'm right where i need to be this one we know where we're at let's see if we can take these three three quarter inch self-tapping screws and get in there nice that goes in very very smooth let's see if we can now that was between the band here where i've got the the bolt going through now I've got this nice and tight. Let's see if we can do just as well going through the band itself. So I wanna go high <clears throat> on the band because I know that it only comes down about a half an inch underneath the band. So let's do it right here. Awesome, awesome. It's gonna turn out just fine. late but better late than never put on my safety goggles here now it says do a minimum of four i'm probably going to do five so i've got three already i'll go as far back to the back side as i can 
and I'll hit it again on each side here. There it is. All right. Hey guys, there's a buck right down here on the edge of my woods going into the, from the woods into the field and he was doing a buck rub on the tree. Can you see him going through the woods there? Wow. I can't believe he was right up here with all this noise. So cool. When I arrived here this morning, there was a bunch of doe in the field. I'll show you a quick clip I got on my phone from that. Welcome to the lovely place. Just got here, pulled up, and that's what's bouncing across the field. Oh, there's another one. And is that the big daddy up there? Okay, we got that one done. Now let's go ahead and put several screws in this one. I've got it straight right where I want it. And uh, my deer, he went on. So it's time to get back to it. Now keep in mind, if, if you did not need to re reposition this like I'm doing, you can just lock it into place and no screws are needed. But in my case, we gotta screw it down a little bit. So I'm gonna set you out right in front of it so you can see it. And we're about to put our next 36 inch section on the 30 degree angle and see where it lands. So far, everything is secure from here down. So let's get this up there. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna sweep this off. Let's do this. doesn't seem to lock it seems to keep keep going why is that that's interesting you noticed I could continue to rotate it but it was somewhat engaged so to feel secure about this not only will I brace it up here but I'll probably put a few screws in it as well that's interesting Okay, how does it look? Does it look straight with the building? Now that 30 is gonna go on up here. We'll put another level on the scaffolding for that, but we've got some work down here to do first and some work with this bracket that came with the 30s. I'm considering using it on this three foot extension pipe here. All right, so I went ahead and I put my 30 degree angle up on the 36 inch pipe there. Well, 
I'm noticing what you're noticing and that is it's going out much further than it needs to I was reading the manual as well earlier and it said if you have a certain amount that you're trying to come out beyond a certain length you need to use a certain length pipe and I'll show you what it said but I can just tell by looking at it I'm gonna need a 24 inch pipe right there instead of the 36 I'll let you get a closer look so that's the plan all right so I just took the 36 inch piece off I bought three of these 36 inches I really should have bought two 36 inches and one 24 incher and uh if i get the 24 i believe it's going to land right where it needs to before where i can angle up and it will be much closer in to the soffit there for bracketing and it'll have less weight coming out off of the house and so i'm going to run over to my local tractor supply it's about 30 minute drive i'm going to grab the, the 24 the downside to the 24 these are all galvanized not stainless steel and we did that on purpose because we had some galvanized parts and we wanted them all to remain looking the same but they don't have a galvanized 24 inch and so i'm gonna have to go grab a uh, stainless steel one and spend another 120 bucks and on top of that these were ordered from northern tool and at northern tool there's a 15 percent restocking fee because they these come in from the manufacturer they're shipped directly from duravent and on top of that you have to pay for shipping back so I might just save it for a future project uh, in a shop because uh, we do have the other wood stove or I might sell it on marketplace or something like that so anyway we're gonna keep moving next thing you see will be a, a big shiny stainless steel two foot pipe sticking out of there and we'll see where that lands all right so here's the chart I'm talking about it's on page 13 it's table 3 basically we're using a 30 degree we're actually doing an offset of 15 inches that's that overhang that we've got up there and therefore it tells us to use a 24 inch chimney section I was using the 36 which is designed more for a 21 inch uh, offset I think a lot of it of course will have to do with with how far you're up the wall before you come out as well but i think this is going to work just perfect for us you may notice that i'm missing mrs lovely but i tell you this mrs lovely she's not missing out on anything and here's what i mean by that i contacted her i told her what we were about to do the stainless steel piece 24 inch what we needed and she set me straight real quick that's one of the reasons we call her mrs lovely she knows everything she can diagnose you she can fix things she can save you money she can make things match she's pretty awesome so she said let's look at amazon see if we can just get a 24 inch galvanized shipped to us by tomorrow and maybe save some money well guess what that's exactly what she did so we'll be back in a flash and we'll get that one on you might ask why do we need a wood stove when we got this cozy propane for these little princesses and the answer to that is if everything goes down and the grid is gone then we won't be getting refills of propane but we've got 60 acres of wood out there all right we got it in we have the 24 inch chimney pipe dura plus six inch everything worked out it's galvanized and i've put it up let me show you how well it fits unfortunately most of this morning's footage is gone I had an SD card blow up on me and so I previously recorded everything you're about to see step by step but I'm gonna walk you through it now so don't worry you're gonna lose nothing we're gonna show you everything all right well since you we lost your footage this morning we've been getting rained on all day as I've been doing this uh, we've had rain all night the leaves are soaking wet the fields wet I'm wet I've uh, taking off jackets because they were wet but uh, anyway uh, the plan today was to completely finish this which would mean I would need to be climbing up on this slippery roof not gonna happen today we're gonna come back you reckon I ought to clean these gutters out uh, yeah I think maybe that's gonna happen soon we're gonna put some gutter guards up there too because we're gonna be harvesting rainwater all right let me show you this so last time i left you we had a three footer here now we have our 24 incher we also put the additional 30 degree 
up here on top of the 30 the 24 incher and above this we put a clamp that came this clamp uh this adjust this bracket came with the actual uh 30 degree the two 30 degree pieces it was in the kit and it's the elbow strap and in case you want to know it's 6dp-es well i had to do a little fabricating you can see i did a lot of measurements to determine what angle this was going to come at cut this off bent it here same thing on the other side bolted it in put some of this uh nice sealant in there behind that uh, previously i accidentally drilled a hole up here thinking i can mount it up there there's no wood back there believe it or not you pole barn builders would know that now i've thrown a 36 inch on top of that and we're up a good bit the plan is and you know what i could possibly get away with just this one 36 inch but the plan is to put another one that's going to give me a ton of draft uh the rule is to uh let me think of the to, to go from wherever the top of your chimney is over 10 feet and make sure that you're two feet above that i don't know what that means do you uh so i've got an additional two actually two additional three footers we're going to use another one and we're going to stack it up but when i do that i will be putting this bracket on there when i get down i'll tell you about that bracket how i save money on it and how i kind of fabricated that one also but right now we're going to put a couple of regular uh pole barn screws like these right here we're just going to go ahead and tap these a couple here just to keep that from twisting that should hold it i want to show you how how level this is so let's put it on the side it's magnetic not bad at all perfect all right so as i was holding the pipe up to put that bracket on i noticed this was a little bit loose here uh it's it's you know it's tightened in but it, it just wanted to pull away from this 30 degree i've got screws down here but i want to put a couple screws on each side in there as well and this is not easy to do when you're not coming straight on to it and so we're gonna try it right here Nice. Okay, let's do it the other side. Just to make sure everything stays where it's supposed to be. Hey, there it is. There it is. Let's see if I need to take it anymore. I don't think I should. That's good. We got one on each side in the back and that's the only place we need it we're good all right i just wanted to answer the question that we were talking about a few minutes ago here so this is chimney placement what you do is two feet minimum above the highest point of the roof within 10 feet so you come over to your chimney pipe you measure over 10 feet where it's level and as long as you're two feet above that mark that takes you over 10 feet. You've gotta be a minimum of two feet above that, and then you'll be good to go. I'll take a look and see where we stand currently, but we're probably gonna put that other 36 inch pipe up there anyway. So right now what I wanna do is I wanna get this cap secured on this last 36 inch piece of pipe. And uh, then I wanna go up and get this on top. I may not get that um, bracket, that extended roof bracket on today because the roof's still wet, even though it has stopped raining for the moment. Uh, but this is confusing me a little. I'm not finding the good instructions that I had hoped for. Maybe I missed them in the manual. But this piece, this female piece here, or, I'm sorry, this male piece here goes right inside this upper section, right down through there. 
but once it's down in there, of course, this is the inner area. I can't screw into that and don't want to. Uh, and it only goes into that area about one inch. It's got these little divots here that kind of grabs hold of this and doesn't want to easily come back out. I've pulled it out a couple of times and put it back in. It wants to stay, but a good windstorm could take it down. So the only thing I can think of once I get it down in there is take some screws and drill in through here into this outer section about four times around there just to hold this in place. Um, it doesn't seat all the way down. Again, it just goes down that one inch. So it leaves a gap so that you could, you know, something can climb up in there, which I don't quite understand why they would leave that gap without a screen. You have the screen up here, but down here, even after it's locked down, there's still the capability of something climbing up and going down in there. So that's not cool. So it'll spin. I can pick the whole thing up by that because it's grabbing it, but I don't trust that in a windstorm. So like I said, at this point, I think I'm just going to take a screw, angle it down into here a few times around. But yeah, I can reach in here. I can feel all the way down in the pipe. Um, that doesn't make sense to me. And there's not another part that I'm aware of. I don't see more instructions. So, hmm. Okay, guys, we, we found what we were looking for. Figure one, there's the, the cap right there. It says, snap the chimney cap onto the top of the chimney. The chimney cap can be removed for chimney cleaning as described in the chimney, blah, 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 maintenance instructions. So, apparently, it's uh, just snapped on. Um, I don't like that, but uh, I may or may not put some screws in it. It kind of sets a little cockeye, and it does this. I guess it'll settle down kind of level after the wind blows it. But I can always, well, I'd rather do it now if I'm going to do it. Let me give it some thought. And we're going to put it up. All right, I decided to do it. I've got a level up here. I'm going to push this down. We'll drill a hole or two. And then we're going to uh, put a bolt in there. Look, let me get the right glasses on. Those were Mrs. Lovely's reading glasses. They were awful pretty. But let's put on some glasses that will protect my eyes. Now, I'm going to hold it down, level, go in there, angle down. All right, we're in there. Let's take this and let me get a screw, a, a little bit on here that'll drive that. Okay, we're set. Let's pop this on. Let's make sure we get into that hole that we want to get in. Need my light. By the way, if you see a lot of good light that you don't normally see in here, we got ourselves a little special thing that brightens up our night here at the lovely place. But it's not brightening it up underneath here, so I need to hold this down to find that. There it is. All right, I'm not going to go too tight because I don't want to dent this in. back a little put one on the other side since we're doing it that way we need to check level this direction all right okay i gotta get my level right before i put that next hole in good So much fun. Gotta find that spot again. Slightly, slightly off. Now it's perfect. We're gonna go with that. Let me show you. Good enough, especially if I do that. 
Okay, this is a big deal. We're gonna put the top pipe on. We are not putting the bracket on today. You're gonna to see that in a moment. And we're also gonna tighten up everything on the inside in a moment as well. But right now, we're gonna get this chimney final as far as the height, the caps on here. Let's see what happens. I gotta mine my seam to make sure it's in the back. Uh, take it this way, drop it down, and twist it. Seams in the back, chimney's on. How does it look? Looks uh, good. Looking good, looking good. I will show you something that needs to be improved and, and fixed and so that you won't make this mistake. But uh, yeah, from back here, it looks really nice. And we definitely have, if we were to measure 10 feet out, I'm just gonna give you an, I would say it'd be about like that, who knows? And obviously we have two feet above that, so we're perfect. That is very solid. That looks good. But yeah, let me go ahead and show you the problem. So when I put those four screws in, I actually put two in originally and I saw this issue and I put two more thinking I could correct it. But if you look up at it, you see where it kind of bows out it's a little too tight what's going on are those screws are a little bit short and for me to get a good bite with a couple of threads i had to go a little deeper than i need to so i'll get some longer screws take those out replace them with the longer ones bend it out so that it's not curved in there hopefully i can make it round again all right we've got some light on the subject now uh it's getting a little dusk outside as you can see but it's bright in here and i want to show you what we're doing on the inside until we can get back out on top on the outside all right so this is the six inch 6dvl dash adt it's the double wall adapter that i talked about that we might use instead of this little piece of stainless steel that came with the kit so i'm going to show you the differences in the two and that way you could determine which way you want to go I think we could have went either way after looking at this and been just fine saving some money and using this one. Okay, so we got it out of the box. Let's take a peek at this thing. We'll determine if it's worth it. This one cost me about 33 bucks, I believe. Plus tax. Got some screws with it here. Now, the benefit of this that I've been told from Duravent is that it just simply makes installation easier. It's really not that much more beneficial. But when I saw it online, this is what I noticed. This double wall, this pipe, this pipe, okay? This stainless steel pipe. All this is is an insert. And I think it's almost identical to the other insert. It may have a different position for these ribs. But uh, it does insert into this, which gives it more... Uh, protection right here again i think that we would have been fine going the other route i'm not sure if this is going to create a little bit of a difference in spacing than that does so the one i will use will be based on which one fits better probably i'm hoping to use this since i invested in it and it just simply makes it easy it's got these screw holes that go up on the pipe itself on the dvl and it allows you to just screw it right into it so it gives you a little bit more ease in installation by not needing to screw your own holes in in that other piece so uh, i'm not sure exactly where you would screw it if you did that one but uh anyway let's look at which one of these might be the best way to go all right i pulled the pipe off the stove i'm gonna pull out this piece this is the one that came with the kit so we're going to compare these two pieces the one that came from the new kit and the one that came with the original through the wall kit. So what we have here, this one's about an inch wider, but that inch may insert inside and we may not be creating more space. We're gonna find that out. But I'm gonna pop this up and see how it all just kind of fits together. Let's check it out. All right, for a moment, let's assume that I got that screwed on there. I'm gonna try this real quick. Uh, now this piece, it just goes right in there. And you can tell it only goes that one inch right there, that first section. And it looks like it's really, really close to actually meeting up. 
I mean within an eighth of an inch right here. I'm just curious how the outer pipe's gonna fit now that we've put that on. Hmm. Let's see here. Let's make this fit right. We've got the seam issue that we need to deal with. So, yeah, I didn't think about doing it actually this way, but we will do this first, and then we'll go the other way. Let's, okay, so there's the holes. Let's line them up, get, get the seam offset from one another. Doing this with this supported on my knee here. I tell you what, it is a very tight fit. It doesn't feel like it's made to go over it, but it is. There we go. All right. That's it. It's lined up. The screw holes are there. They're there right there, and they're lined up, ready to go. So let's see, see how this works now. happening now this is coming out a lot further it sure feels like so it's gonna take some figuring out it's not gonna happen this evening it's been a long day all right back in the shop real briefly I have a curtain rod here I'm gonna cut these off in one inch little pieces I'm gonna put them in between the uh, chimney pipe and the outer rim of this and that way I'll hold it out one inch all the way around and we should have a perfect circle. We'll pop it right back up there. But this time we're gonna put the uh, extendable roof bracket on here before I put it up and that way I can climb on the roof and mount it in place. All right, screw number four. We're going to, I've got a little lip here. I had to angle this little one inch piece. I put it all around and I'm making sure that it it's coming out one inch before I finalize this. Let's turn this one around that way. I've already got pre-drilled holes. And of course the outer rim hole, I uh, drilled bigger than the screw so it wouldn't want to try to pull it in. Get my glasses on so I can see up in there. There it is. So let's take this and tighten it down just a little bit, get a couple of threads in. And let's check that measurement. As you can see, it bit. Yep, we're exactly one inch. So now, hopefully, when we look up at it, it'll be round all the way around it. You like my wife's glasses? Okay, I've turned it upside down. Let's see if you can see up high. Maybe not, but at an angle, you can tell that it looks pretty even all the way around there. So yeah, that's a nice little hack if you wanna secure your cap on top of your chimney pipe. So I'm gonna try to mount this extended roof bracket onto the chimney pipe before we put it on the roof. So that means that this metal bracket's gonna be sliding across the roof as I'm sliding the whole thing up there. So I brought some thick socks to keep it from scratching the roof. Pretty sweet idea. I think that'll help. I gotta remember my seam. There we go. Does that look better down there? Yeah. Nice. Now, let me grab that roof bracket and mount it about right up here as far as I can reach up. And I'll lay the legs up here on the roof and then <laughs> I'll sweep off the rest of those leaves and then we'll mount that bracket down onto the roof and then we will call this up here done I can't wait okay we've got it up here let's put our socks up there on the roof 
one out that way. Let's take this bolt off. Let's start it down low. We can raise it up. It doesn't have to be too high. The higher it is though, the, the better I think. Mrs. Lovely, question for you. Get in the very front and tell me if this is centered. I think it needs to come around this way. I'm sure it's in their eyes too. Toward the truck? Okay. Let's see if I can get this bolt in there. And now the nut. Got the nut on. Now I can raise it a little bit more. <clears throat> Since it's moving a little, I'm gonna check for level. Just to be sure we're still good way up here. We can adjust that with the brackets. That side's good. Okay. I got these paper towels with me because I'm gonna clean the roof before I put the sealant down underneath those bracket connections. So it looks straight up there. Okay, let's tighten it. That's definitely tight. Now, we're going to move the scaffolding around to the side, climb up, get on the roof, and get this thing straightened out. So a tip for you guys, take the sticker off before you do this. Uh, and a great way to get that sticker off is, I was holding these pieces over the propane heater last time heating it up real good and it'll peel right off this on the other hand is cold and i'll be lucky if i get all this okay after a few minutes we got it nice i'm up on the scaffolding about to get on this roof and if i have a fear in life it's the fear of heights so before i get up here because i don't want to do a lot of talking once i'm up here uh I'm gonna mount these down first. I'm gonna take the socks off, mount these, and you're supposed to mount them at about 60 degree angle apart. So kind of close to where it's at now. And at about a 60 degree angle from the pipe itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one. There we go. So I'll be able to mount this one from standing right down here. And I'll probably put it down here on this. Uh, I think that's called a purlin under there and uh, i'll take the other one over that direction up that way maybe a little bit more yeah i'll probably have to go a little further than 60 degrees and get on that one up that that way so uh we might as well do the easy one first right while we're right here no sense in climbing up there just yet why not let that wait huh so i'm gonna clean this up first and then we're gonna get the mounting it all right we've cleaned this area off a little bit so what i'm gonna do toss this down there is i'm gonna fill the bottom up of, of this up with uh this sealant that we've got and it's gonna go at a little bit of an angle here but that's okay i know i've got wood underneath this i was able to feel under here and feel where that started and we're probably about right here so let's do this let's get some adhesive on or some sealant on here i mean I 
that'll just about do it right there. So, we're gonna pop in some of these sheet metal pole barn screws. That it's the exact same screw that they used metal screw when when they were putting the barn up. Get this on. to a different speed. Nice. All right, let's do a couple more. We got four holes in this. We're gonna fill them all up. Sealing it good. Oh, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Not that I can tell. All right, we're solid there. Now, I'm not sure. I see that this might be a little loose. I'll tighten this down a little bit. Hopefully, I've got what I need to do that with. Now, I'll have to get a wrench. And do that or a Phillips screwdriver and tighten it from this side we'll come back to that I hope that one's tighter up there so we'll pop this one back out put the one I had in there because I don't want to fiddle with it up there now I'm gonna climb up there we're gonna clean that one and we're gonna get her mounted down all right here comes my favorite part let's get a little leverage okay sweet going yeah this is no fun y'all all right i think i'm up far enough now getting down is what's going to be scary as crap <laughs> let's see about let's take off my sock toss it down that way this we want it right here we're probably gonna do it something like this right here I'll tell you what I'm gonna come on over here just to bring that closer to me that area up there that I'm gonna have to tighten down I don't want to have to get over to the edge too far but that will be next that's gonna be even a little more challenging I'm afraid but uh, Let's let that sun bake it for a second while it's doing that. Let's get this all sealed up here. there ought to do it sure if that one hit just in case it didn't we're gonna stick another one right here I believe we're good I don't think any water is gonna get anywhere near that okay since I'm in a stable spot right now I'm gonna swap this out for this because it's time to tighten these down we'll throw the windex that way 
and just let that set there for now. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I touched it. That's what I just did. I was looking away and touched that. That figures. I knew I couldn't get away with this without getting it on me. It never fails. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got here. You know what I didn't do is I didn't check level, but guess what? That thing's level enough for me. Get my knee over here. Oh, that just broke that. Let's take it down a notch. We don't want that to happen again. That was a little bit over tight. So that sucks. I might have to. <sighs> that was the rest of that one, that first one. Too bad I did that. I'm gonna have to come back up here and put a new one in it. Let's uh, let's get these on without getting to that point. This is slippery up here. <clears throat> I think we're good on all those. This looks like it could go a little further. Don't break. I'm gonna call that good. All right. Hi, Mrs. Lovely Wave. Oh, okay. It's scarier than it should be. <laughs> but it's scary. That looks good, though. I just wish I didn't break that bolt. Other than that, we're golden. And I think the level stayed good. It looked great from the ground, so we're going to call it good anyway. I never dreamed that I would think that a chimney pipe would look so lovely as it does, but my goodness, does this look gorgeous. Oh yeah. That is a beauty. It's a thing of beauty. Okay, here is how straight it is. That's pretty doggone straight. That's pretty level. Look at that. I'm psyched about it, guys. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, so I'll show you what's next. But we're getting there. We are getting there. Oh, that'll blind you. That will blind you. That sun coming from the west there. Southwest. Looking good. Looking good. So the next thing I need to do is put the right spacing behind here, which this is three quarters of an inch. So we're probably about right. I'll confirm that with a level. I'm actually gonna get the interior chimney pipe on first and set to make sure I adjust this appropriately because it could tilt down or back a little depending on what happens on the inside. So that will be coming. As far as the outside though, just these two bolts in these brackets, uh, that's gonna be it. One last look out, out here at the moment. And by the way, look up there around the cap, that perfect circle that we've got, that we put those supports in there. This looks a whole lot better than it did. But yeah, the bracket turned out good. I don't think it's quite a 60 degree, but I think it's gonna support it. I think it's good. Okay, so on the inside, just to let you know what I have been kind of struggling with, how I'm going to deal with it, but I think I've got an idea. So this piece, this round outer portion, it's long. I clipped these earlier. I just clipped them with the metal shears to try to make sure that it could go over this well, but it doesn't even need to. It's actually butting up to the original circular piece. Uh, let me just show you real quick. That piece in there is what this piece is supposed to slide over and into. However, uh, just due to the thickness of my wall, uh, it's not going to need to do that. But what I do need to do is I need to screw this 
into that. Uh, and so if I put this on here and it goes over it. Okay, so if it goes on here, there's just no way to get in behind it. This is solid wood and, uh, and, and just tighten it down. So I had a, a good idea, I think. So we have two by sixes on each side of it and underneath it and above it. And so what I'm gonna do is measure the distance between the outer portion of this two by six in past those two pieces of metal. And after I get, or right before I put my wall up, I'm going to get this right where I need it. And then I'm going to put some screws through here to hold this in place to keep it from turning. At the moment, I'm just gonna get my chimney pipe up here, make sure that I've got it in there exactly where it needs to be and everything's working perfectly and tighten it down. And uh, then again, like I said, after the walls go up, we'll tighten this and, or prior to the walls going up, we'll tighten this and we'll be good to go. I think that will work. So I do wanna let you know though, I'm only gonna get screws that are not long enough to get into this pipe. Whatever we do, we don't want those screws to come inside and get into these uh, pipes on the inside. So I measured it from the outer two by six, just past the metal before it gets to these pipes at all. And I can go up to three and a half inches and we'll be great. Okay, there's three screws that go in this upper adapter here. I've already put two in. So let's go ahead and knock out this third one. Now this piece, I slid there, luckily it didn't hurt it too bad. This piece just slides in and out of that. That's the uh, adapter that came with that, like I showed you earlier. So we just need to tap this evenly down. And now we can put it up onto the wall. So now that I've got a, that up there temporarily, and of course we, we will be taking the chimney pipe off and putting the walls behind that. And like I said, screwing that in tight before we uh, finish everything out. But right now I wanna get this thing working so that we could potentially put a fire in it. I'm gonna do a little research. I wouldn't mind any comments for you to let me know if you think it's safe for me to build a fire in this without yet having my wall up that is you know tile or whatever we're going to do metal uh to prevent it from uh you know heating this up we would be here with it the whole time watching it just letting this smoke off all the uh, the new oils and things on this uh wood stove but i'm anxious to see that happen that's not going to happen on this video but right now what we're going to do is definitely get this chimney pipe connected and call this thing complete so here we go let's go let's see if this is going to work now, I already can tell you it's gonna be a very difficult thing to do because I'm gonna put this in first and then I'm gonna turn the pipe around and attempt, well, that went on easy, but I'm gonna to attempt to get this in here. And to make this happen, right now it's way angled up and I'm gonna to have to tilt this, the wood stove or something or slide it and I hate to do that but I'm gonna to have to do that to get it to go down in this hole here. But we're gonna to have to make that happen. All right, she's in. Everything's level. We're good there. When we tighten it down up on the top, which we've not done, we've gotta put screws all the way around this. And when we do, it's going to pull it and get it right where it needs to be to keep that at level. And then on this side, Get the magnetic side on here. On this side, we're good to go as well. Oh yeah, just so you know, I didn't forget, we're about to put the silicone sealant around the thimble pipe that goes through the wall. So don't forget this step, 500 RTV. You're gonna need it. So all that's left to do is tidy up outside, put that a uh, little uh, piece under the bracket so that I can tilt this up as high as I can because that's what needs to happen. We still have our nice uh, rise that we've been needing so that smoke can continue to go out. And uh, it's looking good. Just look at that sky. All right, it's time for me to remove my little separator here. I think I'll put it up higher if I can just to keep that out a little bit 
there's already a pre-drilled hole in the bracket here so I'm gonna go through there all right we're through metal into wood just where we need to be let's go ahead and do the same thing here this is a little tricky i'm going to be going in on this angle of the metal so i'm going to have to hold it kind of prevent it from falling down that way let's start in at this angle first all right straighten them all up later but I'd like to get a couple more in there as you know we want to raise this thing up some so that the angle of the thimble will meet the uh, double wall DVL a little bit better okay we've got two more let's see if there's any way let's just try one at a time I'm pushing one out as I'm putting one in so that doesn't work Okay, now I got them beside each other. I think we're better off putting the whole bunch in at once. What do you think? Let's pull them out. Okay, let's try that. I believe I can get this this quantity in there. Let's see. Maybe if I just raise up on this. No, I'm gonna have to pull out literally. about got it now on this side let's try putting a couple in there because I believe we need to come out a little bit more over here let's take a peek where, where we're at we're about uh, seven eighths here and we're about the same over here so i'm just going to put one under here just so that it'll hold on that angle that we're at yeah i believe we're good i'm going to go inside real quick and just take a peek at the dvl yes that helped the dvl they are it's uh nice and flat up against the in, internal section there so let's uh let's get this in i'm going to pop it up to three and we're going to put one in and hopefully it'll go all the way through into the two by six now that's crushing in the wall a little bit but we're not all the way in Now we're all the way in. We could back it out just a little. Let's go ahead and put this side in. Good, we're set. That doesn't look bad at all. And you can tell I put that one behind here. We got some touch up to do. Anytime you're working with metal, you're gonna have touch up. You're gonna scratch it. I'll get something, a little chisel and tap this one up and see if I can get it to line up a little bit better. But all in all, it's good to go. Let's look inside one last time. Okay, as soon as we, it kind of just falls this way at the moment, but as soon as we put our screws in here, here and on the other side, it's gonna tighten right up against it. It's gonna be perfect. And we're set. Also, do not forget, I did not show this on camera because I haven't done it, but I'm going to do it off camera. These two brackets on this uh, through the wall thimble support bracket have to go on. So we're going to get those on too. Oh yeah, and one more thing. We can't forget our drip tray. We got to put that in as well. Okay, another thing.
Don't forget the cap that goes underneath the T. Yeah, that's important. All right, look how beautiful it is out there. I tell you what, this is the lovely place. This one's a wrap, lovely people. I'm standing up here on the bed of the truck so you can see this awesome sunset behind me. Is that not amazing? Wow. I just want you to know that uh, I appreciate you being with me during this project. I hope it was informative for you. Uh, it was a bear to record all of this. I mean, I could have probably done this in two thirds of the time. I know it took at least another third of time recording this, but I wanted to have this for you. I wanted uh, folks like me who are looking to try to figure out how to do this to be able to get this done and have a lot of questions answered before they go and begin this project. So I sure hope that we accomplished that for you. I hope that you were happy and that you learned something and I'm sure you saw a lot of mistakes that I could do better in the future. Uh, we learn as we go here at the lovely place and that's what's so lovely about it. You know, if, as long as you're trying, as long as you're doing something, then you're progressing. When you sit back and you say, you know, I don't know how to do that, so I'm not going to do it. Or if you spend that hard-earned money getting someone else to do it, that's okay if it is out of your league. And this was really close to being out of mine, but we got it done. I think it's going to be safe. I think it's going to be uh, really, really a long-term uh, benefit to us. No doubt about it. And if we ever lose the grid, we've got woods, we've got trees, and we're going to be able to keep ourselves warm in here. Thanks for joining us, guys. We appreciate it. Uh, take care of yourselves. God bless you, and stay lovely, people. See you next time.